In this video, we're going to continue our look at descriptive statistics, measures of size, and we're going to look at two more types of ways of representing data. One's called a dot plot, and one is called a stem and leaf plot. So we'll talk about those two ways of representing data in this uh, video. So a dot plot is sometimes also known as a line plot. I will pretty much always refer to it as a dot plot. It is uh, graphically represents every single data value. It has a horizontal number line for a, a horizontal axis, and it, it's got to extend at least from the minimum data value to the maximum data value. And we have one point, one dot, for every data value, and it's above the corresponding value on the number line. And if you get more than one dot at the same value, you just vertically stack them for multiple occurrences of the same data value. You can build this up one dot at a time as the data is obtained, and then use it. It's it's uh, you can use the dot plot then to illustrate some other descriptive statistics. So I mentioned in a previous video uh, that I had a bunch of information about the U.S. presidents, and here it is, uh, three columns from that larger table, and I have the order that the president was first inaugurated and their inauguration age at their first inauguration. Some presidents were inaugurated more than once, uh, several of them once, several of them twice, and in the case of Roosevelt, four times inaugurated. And one interesting thing, uh, Grover Cleveland was inaugurated twice, but Benjamin Harrison was in between. Okay, and uh, actually, I don't want to include Grover Cleveland here. He's also known as the 24th president and the 22nd president, but I, I, I want to omit this 55 because I only want the first time they were inaugurated. So I didn't include uh, George Washington twice. I'm not going to include Grover Cleveland twice only the first time they were inaugurated. And we can see how far this goes to here. So um, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to start by getting a piece of graph paper, make a horizontal number line. Let's go from 40 to 70. It's got to go at least from 42 to 69 because uh, 42 right here is the youngest and 69 right here is the oldest. So it has to go at least from those between those. So let's just go from 40 to 70 and label that axis age. That's going to be horizontal. And then for each president, go in here and put a dot above their age. So we'll come to that. We'll find 57 on our number line. We'll put a dot there for George Washington right above 57. Then we'll find 61. We'll put a dot for John Adams. And then we'll find now 57 for Jefferson. We already have a dot for Washington, so, so put the dot for Thomas Jefferson above the dot for George Washington, still above the 57. Then Madison, another 57, and so forth. And do this until you get to the end. We shouldn't really, again, I want to omit this line here for, for Cleveland um, and only put one for, one for Cleveland. So go ahead and do this um, on your own now. And let's see if you can come up with a dot plot. Press pause now. Well, here's basically what the dot plot should look like. Okay, and we have, have this entire thing. So that 57 right there, there's Washington's dot. And then uh, who was, who was uh, I think it was 61 for Adams. And then back we had another 57 here and so forth for Jefferson and so forth. And then we have dots all, all along here. Did you notice who the oldest one was? Well, notice that information is gone from this. So we lost the information of which president goes with which dot. But if we're only concerned with the, the numbers of the ages, then we have all of the data right here. We can see there's one at 69, one at 68, uh, three at 61, uh, one at 42, and so forth. By the way, the oldest was, do you remember looking at it? Ronald Reagan right here, the oldest president we've had um, there. The youngest one was Theodore Roosevelt. 
and then uh, John Kennedy at 43 was the next to the youngest. Kennedy is actually the youngest person ever elected president. Roosevelt came, became president because of the death of the president. William McKinley was assassinated and then uh, Theodore Roosevelt became president after that. So he was the youngest, then Kennedy here, and we have older ones uh, here. Let's see, who is, who is the 68? 68, uh, let's see here, see if I can find it. W uh, William Henry Harrison. And so we can see there's but a lot right in here. So now, what can we identify from this? Well, we can identify the at least the age of the youngest one, not who it was. The age of the oldest one, that's pretty easy to do. So all of them were between 42 and 69. We can kind of see exactly, we find the ages of every single one, not who they are, but how many of every particular age. And we can also see something about how they're spread out, if we have any clumps or clusters, or whether we have... Uh, whether it's mounded up in the middle, this one's kind of mounded up in the middle and it, and it extends out on the edges a little bit. Make an ungrouped frequency histogram for this data. Go ahead and do that on your own. Press pause now. Well, if you come back, you see that ungrouped frequency histogram is really basically the same thing. Instead of having the two dots here, we just have a bar that goes up to two. And instead of having uh, one dot here, we have a bar that goes up one. We have some some ages that, that we don't have a president yet at uh, being inaugurated at those particular ages. All right, so that gives you an idea of a dot plot. Now let's talk about an ordered stem and leaf plot. So a stem and leaf plot is a table representing all the data values in order the stems represent the first digit or digits of the number, and the leaves represent the last digit of the number. So there's basically one leaf for each data value. So you start, we can start with an unordered stem, unordered stem and leaf plot, and then you can put it in order. It gives us a way of sorting the data. So let's take a look here, and again, we're going to uh, leave out Grover Cleveland second time, only put the first time here. And if we notice, they're all in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And so we would put this here. This is the start of an unordered one. So here's how we would do it. We'd say there's a 57, so that's the 7 right here. Then a 61 goes here. Put a 1 here. 57, another 7 here. Another 57, a 7 here. Then a 58, the 8 goes here. Then a 57, the 7 goes here. And then a 61, that goes here. And then 54, the 4 goes here with the 50s. So this 7 means 57, that's 57, 57, 58, 57, 54, 61, 61. Now I only went so far. What I'd like you to do is do this. First of all, go ahead and complete this, completely do this. Okay. And we're doing basically one line per stem here. And this will be unordered as you go through it. Then after you finish it, reorder it. So if this was the whole thing, I'd put the 4, then the 7s, and then the 8 in order. It would be 4, 7, 7, 7, 7, so 4, 4 7s, and then an 8. Okay, so you'd reorder it like that. Okay, so see if you can finish out an ordered stem and leaf plot for this data. I'll uh, leave it on this screen here and press pause and finish up. Press pause now. Okay, well, hopefully if you did this, this is what we ended up with. So in order, the, the order of the ages of presidents at their first inauguration, <clears throat> by the way, it still needs a table uh, title up here, something like this. And notice this is one row per stem. The stem is four, the four for 40s. We have all the 40s on one row, all the 50s on one row, and all 60s on one row. So we have presidents of ages uh, when they were first inaugurated, 42, 43, 46, 46, 47, 47, 48, 249s, 250s, uh, 451s, and so forth. Okay, so it keeps all the ages 
at the uh, at their initial inauguration it loses all the other information for example again with which president goes with which age it's an efficient way uh, to sort the data if you have to do it by hand and it basically play, provides the same visual appeal as a vertical uh, as a horizontal bar graph for a grouped frequency um, histogram horizontally done but grouped together with only three groups. Now, we can also do this so we can do more than one leaf per stem. More than one, I'm sorry, more than one line per stem. So you could break the 40s into lower 40s and upper 40s. So we would be, uh, so if we break that half halfway, so 40, 41, 42, 43, 44 would be together on one line. 45, 46, 47, 48, and 49 would be on the other line. Since we have 10 digits, dividing by 2 gives 5 uh, possible digits per line. And then we'd split up the 50s and 60s. Okay? You could also divide it up to where you had, well, what other factors do we have a 10? Well, you could divide it up. If you divide it up, uh, in 10 pieces then you're not grouping at all you're just you're just listing every uh, every possible one with no grouping at all you could do it in um, five lines per stem because five is a factor and then you just have the 40s and 41s on the line the 42s and 43s on the line and so forth so see if you can do it here's here it is with one row per stem see if you could go ahead and divide this up and make it into two rows per stem, and then also do it again where there are five rows per stem. See if you can do that on your own. Press pause now. So hopefully if you follow what I meant, here's what we have. So one row per stem is here the 40s, the 50s, and 60s. If we break it up, the lower 40s, we have a 42 and a 43. Then we have the upper 40s, two 46s, two 47s, 48, and two 49s. Then here are the lower 50s, upper 50s, lower 60s, upper 60s. If we break it into five rows per stem, we actually uh, 40 and 41 would be the first one. There's none there, so I didn't even put that one. 42 and 43, we have one each there. 44 and 45, we don't have any, so that one's blank. 46 and 47, two each. Uh, 148 and 249s. So you can see how each of the digits, uh, there are two possible digits per uh, row this way. And then you can see the 50s and 60s broken up. Now, what do you want to do? You want to, usually you start with just one row per stem, and you divide it down further if there's um, sort of too many things per stem and not enough not enough stems, not enough rows. Okay? So, um, with only three things here, that's the groups are kind of too big. So here with two rows per stem this works out pretty pretty well here we have six groups that's a pretty good number you want to probably shoot for oh maybe somewhere between five and eight uh, rows this one over here is probably too many stems uh, not only do we have some zero ones but if you count those uh, there's there's sort of too many too many not too many stems uh, too many rows that should probably say okay there we go all right. Now, notice that this also, we, if we made a bar graph corresponding to this, we're talking about a, a frequency histogram still, but this one is a grouped frequency histogram. So let's let's uh, take this one that's two rows per stem, lower 40s, upper 40s, lower 50s, upper 50s, and so forth, and make a grouped frequency histogram for that. I think you can probably do that. Why don't you do it on your own now? Press pause. Okay, well, if you look, there's two in the lower 40s, seven in the upper 40s, and so forth. Well, basically, so 40 to 44, there's two of those. 45 to 49, there are seven of those, and so forth. And this gives us a nice grouped frequency histogram. Again, this is pretty good. What do you want? You want maybe say five to twelve uh, groups, or the groups are called sometimes called classes. 
They're sometimes called bins. Um, so you want one bar per class or one bar per bin. You want the bins or classes to be equal width. And each data value needs to fall into exactly one of the bins. The bins can't overlap. Now we might talk about class boundaries. So 40 to 45 would be a boundary. And technically speaking, we talk about ages. It's from the 40th birthday up to, you know, just, just right before the 45th birthday. Any of that would actually come in here. I've said 40 to 44 because the way we round off our ages. But technically speaking, this goes from 40 up to, you know, past their 44th birthday, but not to their 45th birthday. But notice that in general, class boundaries, you include the left, but not the right. The class width is how far it goes from, from the left boundary to the right, which for example, this one from 40 to 45 is a width of five. So all of these have a width of five. Sometimes, uh, just notice that when you're doing this, we have lost some information that we had on the dot plot and the um, stem and leaf plot, and that is we know there are 70 presidents were inaugurated at the first inauguration between the ages of 45 and 49, but we don't know where those seven are. This, they could be all 45, they could be all 49, they could be spread out in between. We really don't know. Now sometimes we'll mark what's called the class midpoint or the class mark, and it's right in the middle here. So when we do the 45 to 40 to 45, uh, the mark would be um, you average those 45 plus 40 divided by 2 which is 42.5 so again you take the lower class boundary and the upper class boundary add them up and divide by 2 just average them so that is uh, 45 plus 40 is 85 divided by 2 is 42.5 that's exactly right in the middle of this uh, this bar horizontally. So you might want to experiment to find a good number of classes, and what would be a good number, uh, a good place for a starting point for the bins. And we're usually trying for somewhere between five to twelve classes. So uh, some of this is a little bit of um, trial and error to see what would work best. Okay, so now we've seen in this video we looked at um, stem and leaf plots and dot plots, two good ways of looking at data.